Honestly, I just want to be a fairy and have a snail for a best friend and live in a cute mushroom house. So you want to work with fairy magic. Now I'm here to tell you, they ain't sugar spice and all things nice. They can be tricksy and temperamental little things. You know those Cornish pixies from Harry Potter? Yeah, think more like that and less like Tinkerbell. Although she did have a pretty good tood. Hi, my witchy bumblebees. It's Ethany. Welcome back to my channel. And today I am talking Fairy Magic 101. Now I have been seeing fairies since I was a tiny little thing running around the forest and in the bushlands of Australia seeing lots of nature creatures. So I wanted to share with you how you can work with fairies in a safe manner. You will see fairies spelt like this. This is F-A-I-R-Y. That is the fairy tale kind of fairy. Think Christian Robinson and the Grimm brothers. Now those tales actually do have deep folk magic in them as well, but it's more of the commercial type of fairy. Then you're gonna see fairy spelt like this, F-A-E-R-I-E or E-Y. That is the elemental fairy, the real fae of magic. The first thing to know about fairies is that they are not all cute little things. They are not to be trifled with and they can seriously f your sh up. And I am not joking. Unwanted fae in your house can see things going missing, things falling over, spills and breaks happening all the time. You can even get electrical interference in your TV going absolutely berserk. All these things can be attributed to fae. Fairies are always connected to the land. So where you are in the world is going to actually have a big part to play with the types of fae you're going to encounter. Any formations like this where you see a fallen tree with moss and rocks is a wonderful location for fae. But don't go jumping on their carpet. Not respectful and often a very delicate. So be, you know, respectful and, and appreciate it from afar. Because there are elemental beings, there are lots of different types of fairies. So you will find that you may be really drawn to working with a specific type, especially if you look at your zodiac sign or the type of magic you are really attracted to. Always be respectful when it comes to working with the fae and research the type of fairy you are working with. No one likes someone to come busting in their house, aka nature, and demand that they do things for them. You wanna cultivate a relationship and be extremely respectful. I wouldn't wanna piss off a lot of fae. I've seen how badly that can go. When you're working with any type of diva, nature spirit, or fairy, make sure you are giving as well as receiving. So leaving small offerings like milk and honey, even some of your hair or a bead or two at the foot of a tree or a fairy door is a wonderful way to give back. Another way to give back to the fae is to clean up the land you are walking on. If you go on a hike in the forest that is full of fae and you see trash, pick it up so that some fairies don't have to deal with it in their back garden and it's safe for all the animals there as well. Fairy doors have become extremely popular. You see them absolutely everywhere nowadays. See the little holes? This is prime fairy real estate. Also spiders, so just be really, really careful. But these are perfect little areas to leave your offerings. Fairy doors traditionally are small doors that are left at the base of a tree and behind it would be space where you could leave an offering or a wish or a message to the Fae. And now they are absolutely everywhere and even there are total fairy gardens in a lot of areas in the world. I love nothing more than to have a dedicated space for the fairies when I have a garden of my own. If you do have a fairy garden or have one in your community garden, you may find that there are lots of herbs and flowers that fairies are attracted to and also butterflies, bees, and lots of birds as all of the flora and fauna are connected to the elementals and the realm of the fae. Now there are helpful and more tricksy type of fairies. You will see lots of myth and legend about things like doppelgangers, about shapeshifters and stepping in fairy rings and disappearing forever. Sometimes there ought to be a myth of some child being swapped out by a fairy child because they stepped into a fairy ring. There are all of these warnings about the I guess, risks that you may take working with the elemental realm. So remember, do your research. There are also really helpful fae, such as brownies, that you can petition for assistance. You may think of the little fairies that helped the old shoemaker, for example, in the fairy tale. 
So remember there are different types of fae as well as there are different types of witches and people in the world. So make sure you know who you're inviting into your space. So how do you actually go about seeing fairies? Now for some people like myself, it's always been a bit more of a natural thing. I've always been able to see in the aura around different plants and animals and in nature. So seeing fairies was something that was just a natural progression for me. I was lucky to be raised by parents who didn't try to snuff out that kind of magic in me. The best way to start your fairy vision training is to go out in nature and find somewhere that you're not going to be disturbed. Even better if you can find yourself a rock or a base of a tree to sit against. If you want to try and find water elementals and fairies, sit near a creek or a lake. Then you want to start to shift your focus so the environment around you is a bit fuzzy. So you're not actually trying to focus on anything else, you're just bringing your vision to a place of soft focus. Close your eyes and then bring your awareness to the sounds and the feeling of nature around you. Open your eyes in that soft focus and allow yourself some time to see if you can find Faye. You can always bring a small offering with you as well if you want to welcome them into your spot. And always make sure you leave where you have visited exactly how you found it. I have always embraced my inner fairy and I believe magic is all around me. And I think that has helped me stay connected to the realm of the fae. I used to work in fairy stores and I have got quite a few pairs of wings and have been to fairy cons in the States as well. Basically, I will never not be connected to the Fae, and that's the way I like it. Everyone who watches this video needs to go out right after and watch Fern Gully. First of all, you're welcome. Second of all, come back to me and tell me that is not the rip off the Avatar did of that story, because they ripped it off 100%, an Australian film called Fern Gully. That is the tea. Hey, did you find this video fun? Maybe you wanna learn how to work with wands. Check out this video for my Witch's Guide to Wands.